Today I'm going to take a quick look at a piece of software that has very recently been made available for use on silicon graphics machines. We have two members from the IREX Network Forum to thank for this. Firstly, IndigoFan, who discovered the source code for the software. And secondly, JP Stewart, who compiled it into an executable binary for us. Okay, what this piece of software is, it's actually another piece of rendering software. This particular piece of software makes use of the RenderMan renderer to render its output. And it's used mainly for introducing fire and flowing particle bodies as well as fluids into a scene. So let's fire up flow. Okay, what I've done is I've set this scene up as the default scene which loads when flow starts up. And this is the scene that I'm going to be rendering for you today. I only plan on rendering 20 frames of this scene for this demonstration and I'll be rendering it at 640 by 480 and the reason for this is currently my network file system which I've set up between my Mac Pro and this machine is only one way and only allows me to copy files from the Mac to the Tezra and not the other way around so what I'm gonna have to do is once I've compiled a video from the output from this software I'm gonna have to then gzip the video that I've created and then email that to my other machine in order to process it further so that's a little bit of a situation that I have here at the moment. Okay, before I go on to showing you the render setup for Flow, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the location where it saves its output to. So I'm going to go into the root directory, go into opt, flow, and in the flow directory there's a directory called tiff, and this is where it saves its output. The thing to take note here is that this software doesn't produce an output which is in a viewable video format. It produces a bunch of TIFF files which you have to then assemble in another piece of software in order to create a video. So what I will do is I'll show you this towards the end of this video as to how I create a video from the output from this software. So from here I'm going to show you the render setup. Firstly I'm just going to hit play to let the scene run and what you can see is even though it's in an unrendered format you can see the fire burning in the four braziers present in the scene. Okay, because I want to render 20 frames, in order to set up or set the software up to render 20 frames, I'm going to go to the bottom left hand corner here and type in 20. So it's going to render 20 frames and the movement speed is 1 per frame. From there I'm going to go into render and I'm going to set 640 and because I've got a ratio of 4 to 3, it's 640 by 480. I'm going to set the samples to 2 by 2. And then from there I go into Edit, Render Options, and it brings up this window. Go into Render. So the start frame is 0. I'm going to hit in 20 as the end frame. Okay, it is only going to render 20 frames, although you would think it's 21. The output will be 0 to frame 19, even though I've set 20 here. The width and height are 640 by 480 with an aspect of 1 and samples are 2 by 2 okay I want to make use of all the threads available to the software this machine has four CPUs and each CPU can handle two threads so as a result there are eight threads available so I'm going to select all of them to allow the software to make use of all eight threads and then from here I'm going to hit render Okay, and almost immediately as it starts to render, you notice that you've got eight TIFF files which are generated in the TIFF directory. And at the moment it's busy building these files up. And while it renders, you can see in the console that it shows you the progress that each of the eight threads has made. And another thing that you notice here is that it's constantly looking for free threads to allocate information to to be processed. It's also making use of the full capability of this machine at the moment. Okay, so from here what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed the video up just to save some time. Okay, you can see from the CPU activity that it's now almost complete and there it's complete. So looking at the output folder you notice that there are a whole bunch of TIFFs saved and they start at temple0.tiff and end at temple19.tiff so it's 20 frames 
And you can also see that this is not in a viewable video format. So from here what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a video file using another piece of software so that it can be viewed in a video format. At this point I'm finished with Flow so I'm going to go ahead and close it. And from here I'm going to go into Media Tools and open up Movie Maker. I don't have Flame installed on this machine at the moment, so I'm going to use this piece of software which comes standard with IRIC 6.5.30 in order to assemble these frames into a viewable movie. First up I'm going to go into File and go into Movie Setup. Ok, I've got the default image duration for 0.1 seconds and I'm going to set the total video duration to 2 seconds. And then from there I'm going to start importing my images, so I just drag them across. And first up it tells me I need to either scale the import item to the size that the video is set as a default, or I upsize the default size to larger in order to allow for the 640x480 that each one of these frames is rendered at. So I'm going to choose to resize the video to larger, and there you can see the two, or the first two frames are imported. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and import the rest of the frames. The reason why I'm doing it like this is that if I select the whole bunch, it doesn't order them correctly. So, although this seems like it'll take a bit longer, it'll take much longer in the long run if I have to order the video, or should I say the frames, in Movie Maker. So there we go, all the frames are imported, and I'm going to hit play, and there you can see you've got two seconds of film where the flames are animated in the four brazes in the scene. Okay, from here I'm then going to go to file, and go to export as, and what I'm going to call it is temple.avi. And then I'm going to select it as an AVI movie file and hit OK. And what it's done is it saved that to the root directory. So I'm going to go back to the root directory. And there you've got temple.avi. I'm going to double click on it. And if I play it, you've got two seconds of animated video. OK, in order to get this to my Mac, I then have to email it, but the file's current size is, let me just get the info quickly, 73 megs. Okay, that's quite large, so you won't be able to export that to, or should I say email it to the other machine, as your limit for an email, or an attachment to an email is 24 megabytes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to gzip this. So in the console I'll type in gzip. and it's temple.avi ok and there it zips it up Ok, now it's complete. So this file, temple.avi.gz, will then be emailed to my Mac, where I can then process it further. And this is the output as displayed on the Mac. This pretty much brings the video to an end. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks very much for watching.